So in the previous clip, we considered the components of venous return, contributing to venous return, which are contraction of skeletal muscles, movement of blood from the superficial to the deep venous systems, and the pulsatization of adjacent arteries. But how else does blood get back from the periphery back to the center of the body? Well, another mechanism is the respiratory pump. So when you breathe in, if you put your hands there like that, that's your diaphragm, isn't it? All right, so when you breathe in, your diaphragm's gonna flatten. When I breathe out, it's gonna go up. Breathe in, diaphragm flattens. Breathe out, diaphragm goes up. So when I breathe in, the diaphragm flattens, that's going to increase the pressure in the abdominal cavity. And of course, on the right side, running up the abdominal cavity, you have the inferior vena cava. So as I breathe in, the diaphragm goes down, compresses the abdominal contents, that's going to press on the inferior vena cava. And the valves, because of the increased pressure in the inferior vena cava, mean the blood will go from the abdominal through to the thoracic cavity. And at the same time as I breathe in, the diaphragm is going to go down. That's going to reduce the intrathoracic pressure. It's going to reduce the pressure in the thorax. And that's going to help to suck the blood from the abdominal vena cava through to the thoracic vena cava. So the pressure in the abdomen is pushing. The increased pressure in the abdomen is pushing. The reduced pressure in the thorax is sucking. So increased pressure in the abdomen, pushing, reduced pressure in the thorax, sucking. That's going to increase venous return. And then of course, when I breathe out, the diaphragm's going to go down. That's going to reduce the pressure in the abdomen. And that's going to make it easier for the blood to come from the legs up into the large abdominal vena cava. And the vena cava is large, it can store blood, it has a lot of blood. It's called vena cava because it's cavernous, it's a large vessel. So the blood will come in to the inferior vena cava when the pressure is reduced. And at the same time when I breathe out, the diaphragm is going to go up when I breathe out. That's going to reduce the pressure in the abdomen, but that's also going to increase the pressure in the thorax. And that's going to help to push the blood that's in the thoracic vena cava back into the right atrium. So if patients are in bed, we encourage deep breathing. If patients are immobile, we encourage deep breathing because the deep breathing will increase the pressure changes during ventilation, increasing the pressure changes in the abdomen and the thorax, thereby increasing venous return, thereby maintaining the circulation. So as well as patients moving their ankles and their legs and their arms, we want to encourage deep breathing exercises when patients are immobile. And there's one other mechanism I think I'll mention, and this is to do with the velocity of the blood. Now the blood goes from the arterial system into the capillaries, and of course in the body there's untold millions of capillaries. So if you take the total cross-sectional area of these millions or billions of capillaries, it's actually very wide. But then as the blood goes back into venules, the relative diameter or the total diameter is going to get smaller. And then as we go into the larger veins, the diameter is going to get smaller again. And then as we go into the inferior vena cava, although it's a large vessel, the diameter, the total diameter or the total cross-section in the vena cava is going to be much less than in all of the other superficial or all the other peripheral veins so it's going to be smaller again so what we have is a situation where it's very wide in the capillaries gets narrower in the venules this is the total cross-sectional area of the venous system gets more narrow in the larger veins and narrower still in the inferior vena cava and indeed the same effect would be true in the superior vena cava draining the top half of the body and that increases the velocity so the flow of blood is going to be relatively slow in the capillaries faster in the venules faster in the 
larger veins and faster still in the inferior vena cava, thereby speeding the venous return in the inferior and superior vena cava. And of course, maintenance of venous return is absolutely vital because cardiac output is dependent on venous return. That's called the Frank Starling reflex, that cardiac output is going to be the same as venous return. So if venous return is reduced, cardiac output will be reduced. And of course, if cardiac output is reduced, blood pressure can be reduced because systemic blood pressure is determined by cardiac output multiplied by peripheral resistance. So these vacant mechanisms are vital to maintain venous return. Without venous return, I'm afraid you can't have cardiac output.